Um, this is going to be really quick. Um, I've been doing content pretty much like every day um, for the last week for pin drop discussions for um, Aqua Fitness. And obviously it's to generate um, more traffic for the Instagram and definitely for the YouTube because, you know, I'm trying to... <laughs> I'm trying to be not an influencer. I want to be an inspirer. I don't want to be an influencer because that is, one, it has a negative connotation. Um, and that's not why I'm saying that. But I would much rather inspire you to do something and influence you to do it. Influence has an underlying um, tone of motivation. And motivation is like two or three steps away from manipulation. I'm going to be honest. Um, and reason is, is because one, your motivation depends on your goal. So your, so I have to hone in on your self of desire and push you to push your desire even more, which then becomes my desire, right? So I have to take that on and take that into account. So everything I'm trying to motivate you into, I have to embody myself and I would m much rather inspire you just by living my life, living the life that I live truly and naturally. And, you know, like if I have anything, like if literally what I want to see is more people reading the word of God, talking about the word of God intellectually, um, just having debates, having conversations. Um, you know, I thought about this this morning. Um, I was talking to God and then I like bowed and um, worshiped and um, just because I needed to make sure that my, I, I told him, I told Yahweh, I was like, look, there's no hesitation in my, like, servitude to you, to my, in my gratitude, in my, like, appreciation um, for who you are in my life. So, like, I'm going to just bow where I'm at. <laughs> you know what I mean? That That's my, um, that's, that's my take on it. Um, it keeps me humble in my, in my opinion. Um just to humble to him and you know I don't know about how anybody else perceives it or what that is for anyone else um I just know that what I'm building in myself for the relationship that I'm on with him that's what that's between he and I so um outside of that like I want to inspire I don't want to be like yo you need to get in like I've been hard on my mom honestly like truthful truthful moment I've been hard I've been so hard on my mom it's like you need to get in the word you need to get in the word and you know she's been asking like I just you know need you to talk to me about my day I just need you you know to walk with me on this and I'm like I don't really have the the bandwidth or the capacity to do that right now I'm trying to hold myself together I, I have so much that I feel like it's falling apart that I'm putting myself back together and as I'm putting myself back together I'm, I'm trying to get the energy to be able to show up for people when I can't, you know, so I'm like putting a lot out into the world right now because this is me coming back to myself, you know, I'm like, all right, I just need to get back, like, I, I just need to come back to that place to where I'm not think like, bro, I literally was in a place where I was like, bro, I might have autism, <laughs> I'm gonna be 100% transparent, um, because I was like, my mind just like works differently. I think differently. Like it feels like I'm not able to have conversations. I'm not able to communicate and there just might be cultural differences. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't, it's not a knock on me because I'm not able to have conversations. I just not, might not be talking to the right people. Like, to be honest. So, I mean, it's like, I'm not incapable of having an intellectual conversation because I have a history of having intellectual conversations. I have a history of being able to build friendships. Mind you, they might have been based on something else, but like I realized, I had another thought of this, just this perception of like kindness and love. So people that base their interpretation of love off of what they know based on the merits of the life that they have lived, it's like, do you really know love? Do you know what love is? Do you know who love is to say, like, this is not love? Because if your interpretation of love is a situationship or it's an, uh, like, an absentee mother or an absentee father or, you know, like, any of those situations where you have now had to put on so much that you have to control the situations around you so that the the response to the control is what you value as love, then that is not love. That's just what you can control. 
So it's not a matter of it, it just, you know, it's not a matter of just like, that's not what love is. This is not, that's not how I receive love, you know? And I thought about the word kindness and kindness is like, for uh, God has not given us the spirit, the spirit of fear, but the spirit of kindness. He gave us the spirit of love. Like kindness is a fruit of the, like it's a part of the fruit of the spirit because you are kind because you are like him. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like that's in the beginning um, in Genesis, it talks about um, just being the creation and like the how it is formed after other things. Like it's, it's a model, like everything has a model and everything has a template. So the creatures um, in Genesis chapter one, it was talking about the creatures that are after their kind and each after its kind fruit produces after its kind see kind is not niceness kind is literally the similarities so it's it when we get into these situations to where it's like oh that's not kind like that it it just means that it's different <laughs> so you know I, and i laugh um, because it for me this pl- this is an awkward place for me, so that's part of the reason why you know it's awkward fitness um and I, I laugh at stuff because it's like that's me um just rationalize where I'm at in my head with this um with this thought so um I think that we have to change our language on topics that involve one personalities and two how we handle differences because just because there's differences does not mean that that means that it's right or that it's wrong i think that is when we start getting into the real house of like right and wrong it falls into judgment and it's like okay well who's sitting on the throne of judgment in this particular situation is it my emotions or is it jesus is it my past or is it Jesus? Because everything is literally goes to the throne if you really think about it. Like every case, like it's all a case. Like if you if you think about it in terms of legality, right? Like every situation, every scenario you have has a lawyer, <laughs> which is Jesus, who's up there pleading the case for us right now. Like, yo, father, all right, like let's let's see how this plays out. Like it's because he's with the father outside of time. Right, like, I mean, that's not really a concept that I'm trying to, like, break down or get into or anything like that. But, like, when he went to be with the father, he's now outside of the real house of time. Period. Like, that's that's just it. So, every situation, every scenario, he is now, Jesus is also in spirit, observing. And there's also the Holy Spirit. So, that's where it's, like, it's so complex. It's so deep. That we have the ability to step outside of situations and say, okay, my emotions are this. My history is this. I feel this way. However, what does Jesus have to say about this situation before I open my mouth to speak about it? To say this, that, and the third because I feel it. Like feelings aren't real. I, you know, I talked to my wife about this and um, I don't think I was able to like go into depth about it. So here's my spill on feelings. Feelings come from neurons firing and the connectivity. Now, you can be literally brain dead and have no responses, which means you have no feelings in your nerve endings. So there's no signal going to your brain. So basically, if your brain is wired to respond a certain way, you're going to now feel a certain way. If you watch television so much to where you're continually triggered and continually stimulated, you have now been programmed into feeling a certain way. So therefore, you don't even have control over your own feelings because they're now programmed. That's literally why it's called television programming. (laughs) So, um... I mean, I'm not trying to shame anybody or come out down hard on anybody because I've been in a situation myself to where God is like, get off of that. Chill. Like, st- like, do you don't even understand what you're doing to yourself right now? Like, you don't even have the ability to form a thought. 
like, and that's honestly how he came, like, that, to me, that's how he came to me after I got to a certain place. Like, it wasn't, that wasn't the immediate place. Like, the immediate place was love. It was like, oh, like, how my mom is asking me to walk with her. Like, that's how he approached me. Like, he was just like, hey, like, what's up? Read my word. Come to me. Da, da, da. You know, like, I'm like, oh, this is nice. Like, and then it got to the place where it was like, oh, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> that's, that's what I do. And sometimes, like, now, it'll be like, oh, my God, that's me? That's what I do? After, like, a day or two. And I'm like, oh, God, I should not have said that. Oh, God, I should not have done that. Oh, God. And, you know, I think grace shows up. And after that, to be like, okay, now endure it. You did it. It's real. It's It happened. It's in the past, but it's real. Like, I'm not saying that feelings are invalid. I'm just saying certain situations dictate that they are not real. They are not like you can't have faith based off of your feelings. They like those two things don't exist. If that was the case, Sarah never would have known Abraham and Abraham never would have known Sarah if it was based off of feelings. Like you, we, you, <laughs> you miss out on promises because of feelings. If you let, if you let your feelings guide you the wrong way. So the topic, um, this, this quick Saturday topic was about um, everybody is a somebody to somebody. I once believed it was like that I'm you know a nobody, and I like I said it, but that's a lie from the pits of hell. Everybody is somebody to somebody. If somebody is somebody's son, somebody is somebody's daughter, somebody is somebody's father. Like, I have three children and a wife. Like, I have clients that I train that are friends that are, like, you know, literally, like, people that I care about. You know what I mean? So, everybody has some, like, you might not be the somebody to the world standard to be like, yo, I got, like, 13.10 billion followers. You know what I'm saying? I'm making, like, 699,000 million trillion dollars. I get up every morning at five o'clock, hit the, you know, I'm the influencer. I'm that person. I don't have to be that person to be somebody like that is not a, that's that those, those two things are separated by a mountain, literally. Um, so it's like, if we come to the other side of the mountain and say, you know what, in the life that I have, I can make, I can be an inspiration to my mom. I can be an inspiration to my children. I can be an inspiration to my wife if I live the right way, if I walk the right way, if I speak the right way, if I do the things that I'm supposed to do, show up where I'm supposed to show up. And I, I you know, continue to, sh- one, show up for Yahweh, show up for Yeshua, show up for the Holy Spirit, show up for myself. And then I'm able to, you know, go from there. That is what has to give me my energy. That has to be my source. So if that's not where the source is, then I'm losing myself. And I have to do what I'm doing now to come to come back. And it's like, oh, man, like, it's, it's a lot. But it starts. It starts with acknowledging that everybody is a somebody like nobody is a nobody. Somebody would be hurt like it is a lie from the pits of hell to think that if I died today, nobody would care. Like, OK, some people ignore me. Some people might not talk to me, but whatever. Like, OK. Like that that is no longer a thing. <laughs> Brush it off. Like that if I don't have your support, if I don't have your blessing, if I don't have like if I have Yahweh's blessing and I don't have yours, cool. Like, I'm cool. Cause it the thing is, no one knows what's like we don't really know what's happening. I'm gonna be one hundred percent honest. Like, it's all by faith. So <laughs> if it <laughs> We have to get to a place to where we are in a in a headspace to prepare ourselves for what's coming and what's here now, like right now in the moment. And that's being surrounded literally not just by positivity, not by negative. Like one of the things that I, it just aggravates me so much about the word, posi- like the word now about positivity is like. It's just a thing that's going around on the earth. Everybody's like, oh, I'm going to just be positive. I only need positive energy around me. Do you know there is 
like if you were po- like if you're just positive, you will be positively overcharged. If you're talking about um, the elements of nature and you're talking about electrical charges, which human beings have electrical charges. If you look it up on the uh, National Institute of Health, the NIH, there is literally cancer operates at a vibration and it's less than 60, uh, 60 gigahertz or something like that or FPH. I can't even remember the term. But it is a vibrational energy. Like what is like literally what's happening is your body has an electrical charge. The atmosphere has an electrical charge. The earth, the ground has electrical charge. One of the techniques that they have in therapy is literally called a grounding where you take off your shoes and you go out into nature and you put your feet, your bare feet on the earth and you come back to sit like you center yourself. It's I mean, I think it's like a Middle Eastern practice and uh, some 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 but it's a thing. And I believe that's why shoes back in the day, like back in the biblical days, were like everybody didn't have shoes. You know what I'm saying? So they were more connected to the earth. <laughs> but now everybody wanted a two hundred thousand dollar pair of Jordans or Balenciagas or the red bottoms or whatever, Christy Louis Vuitton. Like I mean, yeah, them, I mean shoes are nice. I love some shoes. But don't miss out on touching the earth because your because your the soul is so high up. Um anyway. Uh, yeah, so outside of that, <laughs> um, the if you literally just had a positive charge, you would overclock yourself. Like, it's like what it's like what happens with a cell phone battery. You get a brand new cell phone, it, it now. When you get a brand new cell phone, it doesn't even come out 100%. The, the battery is like 70%. And they'll say, what do they say? At the, like they used to tell you in the cell phone stores, and they don't do it too much because, I mean, everybody's just buying it online. You order, you get it in the house. But they tell you not to charge your phone. But everybody's so used to seeing their phone at 100%. The first thing they do is when they get it out to rip, rip me out the package, I'll be acting brand new. They, they bring it. <laughs> they, get, they get it out, and they want to be 100%. But they tell you to let it die first. Um, this is not, this, I promise you, this is not my intention. Oh, so that it can have the full capacity of getting up to 100%. I used to work at AT&T and Sprint, um, worked there for a while. Um, so, and I also worked at Best Buy. Um, so coming to you from a background in electronics, I did technology tutors and did, uh, digital connectors I was going to try to do like A plus certification, uh, security plus and all that stuff. But I was just like, you know what? That's not really what I want to spend my time in. But I do have a relationship with technology. (laughs) So what I'm telling you is you don't want to overcharge your phone like the same way that you don't want to overcharge yourself. So much positivity is not good. So much negativity is not good. Do you know that in order for it for lightning to strike the ground, what happens is there is a positive charge in the in the clouds and then there's a negative charge in the ground. And that's what creates the lightning in the the heat cool mixture and literally what has like nobody knows whether the ground is positive or the clouds are negative. But it always has to be a one or a zero. Like you can look it up, like just Google it and like, yo, how does lightning happen? No, like scientifically, you can't, like it's different each time for each day in history. It's different. And it's just one of the things that amazes me because it's like, yes, you get that you want to be motivated and you want to be around people that are positive all the time. However, so much positivity will literally just continue to speed up your clock until you overclock. And now you don't even operate at 100% anymore. Really, what you're operating at is 100% of 10%. Because all it is is positive. And then by the time you get to 8%, you're like, bro, all I've been around is positivity. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Like, what's, like, what's good? Uh, you, didn't let your, you didn't let your battery die. <laughs> You, now you need a new battery, and this is you have one life. You have an eternal life if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, um, and I know a great place for you to do that uh, in the comforts of your home, but also at church. Come to church. Come to, everybody go to church, and I know a great church that you can go to. Uh, uh, shameless plug. Um, <laughs> uh, love church, uh, but anyway. 
Um, yeah, so don't think that just because you're around positivity all the time that you're really at 100% because the reality of the reality of it is you're probably not. Um, like too much negativity is toxic, but so is too much positivity. There's such thing as water toxication, water intoxication. You can literally drink too much water. You can do like anything in excess is not good. Like too much working out is not good. You can overwork your muscles. As much as I love the gym and being in there for three or four hours, there is a real thing in overworking your muscles that you can you can become injury prone. But you, I didn't start out working for four hours, working out for four hours. I started out just going on five minute walks. I started like I did not bench one. I didn't bench more than one thirty five until twenty nineteen, or actually, yeah, twenty twenty. No, no, 2019, because I was at Ceremonial Garden. Everybody was lifting. They were talking about being a casket bearer. And I was like, what's a casket bearer? Like, I, that was really when, and I got, and I had, um, actually it was when one of my, um, one of my shipmates from uh, Louisiana came in there. And this dude was just like huge. And I was just like, bro, I want to, I want to lift. That's what started me. And I think the very first, like, bro, I went in there and ego lifted. And I tried to pick up the 70 pound dumbbells and I was like, oh, it's like 70 pounds on each side. It's like 140. And my shoulder started hurting. So when I was making the post about like the um, shoulder injury, it was like, oh, my shoulder. <laughs> um, that, that came from a real experience um, to where one of the first doctors that I had wanted to, um, she was talking about maybe possibly having a shoulder surgery. And I was like, bro, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm I'm cool. I went home. <laughs> I was like, bro, like most of the times when a doctor tells me something I really don't want to hear, I'm going to go home. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to go home. I'm going to think about it because one, because it probably stressed me out. And two, because it's like, nah, I can't let this mess with my faith. Like I might not go for a second. Like the second opinion I go for is Jesus. He's like, he should have been the first opinion. It's the most like in 99.9% .9 of those cases. However, it was like, let me go to the doctor. And I tell you what, I wrestled so long with having knee surgery because I had never had, so, well, no, I did. I had my wisdom teeth removed and then I had a knee surgery. Then I had a hand surgery. Then I had the other knee surgery. And I'm going to have the last knee surgery soon um, just to clean it, just to clean it up. But I mean, it, I mean, everything feels, it feels good. Um, but, you know, it's like anytime you go under the knife, you go under anesthesia, there's always a possibility of something happening. So uh, it's not uh, ideal. But, um, yeah, man, I, I just cause I don't even like needles. Like, I don't like IVs. I don't be like, it's just a little plastic thing. I don't care. Don't put nothing in me, bro. Like, I didn't come to earth with needles in my arm. So I don't want no needles in my arm. That's, pro that's partially my issue with tattoos. Like. I don't, just to clarify that, I don't think that tattoos will keep you out of heaven. I don't think that it dampens your relationship with God. I definitely think the gift is without, is without repentance. So I believe you can have a full, you can have face tattoos, neck tattoos, back tattoos. You can have it all. However, I believe like when you come to Christ, if he convicts you on it and has like that becomes your relationship. Now I believe that you have to operate differently, but people backslide. So even that is just like, that's not, that's really none of my business. <laughs> so I don't think that tattoos will hold you up. I don't think it um, will impede you. I don't think that it literally, I don't think it holds as much weight as um, society has on it, which I just don't like the fact that people would be like, yo, Jesus could have had tattoos. Like, Jesus, Jesus would have had tattoos. No, no, he would not have had tattoos, bro. Like, he, no, 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 no. Stop, stop. Just say I like tattoos and I have not had personal conviction about the tattoos. Cool. That's different. Don't throw Jesus in there. Like, we got to stop. Like, don't. Just no. Just no. <laughs> like, if, there's, if there is legitimate proof for the, for the answer to be no, no. No. N O. It's okay. It's okay to like what you like, but that does not mean that it's right. And I am not the one to tell you whether it's wrong. 
I'm just saying, if you start talking about my Lord and my Savior and the love of my life in situations where I know that if you just like Googled it, it's like, you know what? That's not right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not right. And I don't mean Google like to usurp the Bible by any means. I mean Google to just like fact check. Like I said, like um, in the other podcast, it's just like if he wanted one, he could have had one. I believe there was like documentation of him uh, trapped like before he started his ministry. Like he was just in different places and he was around different people. So he saw different lifestyles. He saw different like bro, Jesus was a man. You know what I mean? Like he was a 20 something year old man that had his own business that was probably successful, if I'm being honest, because. First off, you're the son of God. Like, there might be documented miracles in, uh, like, they started documenting them in Matthew. But I guarantee you, as the son of God, there's no way, as a carpenter, he didn't build something. If they would have had an Instagram, it would have been viral. I'm like, yo, did did God do this? Yes, God did actually do that. (laughs) Like, yes, that was God. Um, So that's just my interpretation. Um, So I, I don't think that. Like, a lot of the things that we say, like, oh, he would have had access to it, but he could have made it. Like, he could have just, he could have been like, ah, oh, tattoo. Boom, just slap, slap his arm. He turned water into wine. Like, he could he could have done a lot of things, but he chose not to just the same way that he chose to die and chose to resurrect. So, that's my, that's my thing, man. I just don't, um... I really don't like that part. Like, lifestyle stuff and choices that you're going to have to take up with him, that's on you. Like I said, I'm here for inspiration, not influence. (laughs) Like, that is the personal relationship that you develop. Because I'm not going to be responsible for anybody's relationship that they have with Jesus. No. Not. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, no, thank you. And the reason why I say that is because in today's society, (laughs) in today's society, we value a lot of the things like we really, really every time that I have literally turned around is literally the conversation of like young rich ruler. It's like you have to tell people to choose between their what they see, the resources that are available, what's happening in the world. And, you know, trying to, like, rationalize it. And a lot of people really are in that position to comprehend just what faith really, like, the, the level of faith that sometimes, that is actually now required. Because it's, like, the level of faith is, the bar has jumped. Because so much is available. You know what I mean? Like, because you, because we have so much access to Google, to the internet, like, you don't, if you really think about it, we used to say, like, uh, the proximity thing, right? If you're six answers away from every answer you need in the world, but with the internet, you really don't even, quote unquote, need people. <laughs> like, if you have internet access, if you have a cell phone that's able to get on the web, you can have most answers. And now with chat GPT and all these other chat bots, it's just like you type it in and it'll just, like, pop up. So, like, you don't even need Google. So, it's it's a place that, because everything is so easy that now it makes everything else like doing the right thing harder if that makes sense because it's like you gotta like like "Mm, i am so busy it would be so much easier to just do this and it's because everything is so fast-paced like you have to you actually have to get to a place where you can walk, walk with your pace run at your pace and not be moved by what's happening and That's a lot of pressure. It's, I mean, it's good because, you know, I mean, I think like diamonds are going to come out of this. I think some real like rock solid believers are going to like just come out of the kingdom and just be like, boom, like, you like, dang, I I see you. (laughs) I see you. Like you got, like, I believe we're about to be in a place and a time where we see miracle signs and wonders all over the place because it's now becoming harder so now like the level of like the level of faith has to rise the relationships have to rise like the true and living god in people has to like ignite in order to really combat ease so 
in the enemy. I could, like, yeah, anyway. Again, this really turned into a 30-minute monologue, and it was not supposed to. I'm going to call it a journal entry. I'm going to say it's a 30-minute journal entry because it was not, I'm telling you, my intention was just to come in here and encourage somebody and say, you know what? Everybody is a somebody. You're somebody to somebody. You're somebody's son. You're somebody's daughter. You're somebody's wife. Somebody's mother. Um, you're somebody's child. You, I mean, if you are a child of the king, you are a child of the king. And that is very important. You know what I mean? So everybody's somebody. Everybody is. Life is important. Breathing is important. No matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance is, you know, no matter what condition life is in right now, everybody's life is important. No matter what the mistake was yesterday or today, shoot, 10 minutes ago, five minutes ago, no matter what it is, life is important. It is. It just is. Breathing is important. God is a God of the living for a reason because we like we breathe him so man i just want y'all to be encouraged i want myself to be encouraged i want my kids to be encouraged i want my wife to be encouraged i want my friends and my family to be encouraged and um yeah man that's it everybody's somebody man so um love y'all appreciate the like or the listens like i i, I see the numbers every like i'm looking I'm looking, um, and I appreciate it for real. So, be easy.